so real quick before you did that did Um, mm -hmm. And your your origin story, like how did you get into? Is that he? Uh, he made an age joke the last time we were. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna use that kuka. I treat him better than probably most people do. Honest to God, most definitely. So there's a question from. Uh, Lewis over here, if he finds a creative finance deal, is it worth contacting a lawyer to draft up the contract? So um, if being I find a sub two student, I'm going to let you answer that. <laughs> yeah. So if I find a creative, oh, what was the question? If we found a creative yeah. deal, is it worth contacting a uh, lawyer to draft up the contract? I yeah. mean, yeah, for sure. I mean, once, once your lawyer drafts up that contract, you can take that template and probably use that to draft up the paperwork. Um, but I would say it's a very good idea to have an attorney or a lawyer on your side. I wouldn't say it's a lawyer, more so like a real estate attorney. Yeah. Um, local real estate attorney is great. Um, you know, you don't have to use them for everything. They're obviously, you know, a little expensive, but they're worth it. You know that it's going to be exactly what you're looking for. So if you found one that you, you know, thought was worth it, either A, you're going to find a title company that might be able to have that paperwork, pro you know, that, that processor may be able to do it for you. Um, or B, you'd find a real estate attorney. Or C, um, if you go into Facebook and you look at Pace Morby's Creative Financing Group, mm -hmm. which is public, there are um, creative finance transaction coordinators that you can pay. They have a, their own services, uh, uh, just transaction coordinating. And part of that is drafting up the um, documents for you. So they will, which I've paid, actually, um, I've only done uh, two two creative deals, but the, the the first one I did actually inside of the sub two program, um, I found somebody who has just a trend, creative creative financing transaction coordinating company, and that's all they do. Wow. Um, and I paid them two hundred bucks. Um, I mean, an attorney is three hundred dollars an hour. I paid them two hundred dollars yeah. to get all the paperwork together. They just asked me all the questions of the deal. They did that. They sent it on DocuSign and sent it to my uh, seller for me. So. I mean, yeah. you're going to pay two, you know, you're going to pay at least two, 250, 300 bucks to a good attorney, uh, wherever you're at for sure. And that's per hour. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah, I would definitely, <laughs> I'm not saying don't, you just, you know, choose yeah. what, what you would think is best for you. So I, I definitely recommend, you know, using a, um, you know, using a, uh, transaction attorney? coordinator from, or, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Transaction coordinator from the sub two crew. You know, it's and you don't have to be a sub two student. Um, there, right. there's a public one. I think, like I said, I think it's Creative Financing by Pace Morby or something like that. It, it's, it's, yeah. you know, it's out there. But uh, there's people in the sub two. Like I'm in that group, so there's people. I guess honestly, if you want, you know, I can try to connect somebody to this um, fellow sub twos here as well. Yeah, I'm local. Yeah. Oh, see, look at that. Cool. So this is in the Facebook group. This is uh, uh, Sherilyn Turner. So cool. in, our, in our Facebook group here, fellow sub two student here uh, as well. And she's a local practicing attorney. Great discussion tonight. Looking forward to working with both of you in the future. So by all means, Lewis, if you go over to our Facebook group, Metro Detroit Off Market Real Estate Group, you can be able to find this. I uh, uh, find this lady in there and work with her. So um, by all means, um, but yeah i mean try to connect as much as possible so i i i'm not a sub two student and um you know i may be eventually but at the moment i'm not but carson here is and i definitely highly recommend everything that i've seen about the sub two group and the the program the mentorship it's all 100 percent worth it so it is i mean it's more so, uh, yeah, whatever. I mean, you get at whatever you, you what you get out of things, what you put into it. But um, yeah, it's a good community of people. There's uh, they just started having meetups here in Michigan. We've done them down in um, Ann Arbor, I believe. Yeah, um, Gabby has put them on for us. I don't know if she's in here or not, but anyway, it's it, it, um, sub two students only. 
Yeah, I mean, not, it's not super strict. I brought a couple buddies that were not in sub two. I mean, the more the merrier, but they're yeah. they're full time real estate, you know, guys. Yeah. So, um, well, well, next time, listen, come get me. I'll, I'll go I will. <laughs> sure. So, but yeah, yeah most definitely. Um, so, with you know, kind of back to what we were talking about as far as you know, talking with these sellers, what is one of the um. I guess one, what's one of the best uh, objections that that you get from a seller? Uh, you what? What the biggest objection I always or the biggest objection I get? Yeah. Oh, um, if it's objection, um, you know that's something I probably have to track or measure. But um, if it's not price, it's it's. Uh, I think it's understanding the process. I mean, I'm trying to think of the biggest objection I get. Honestly, I'm trying to think of the spot. Um, I mean, what are the summer you get? Maybe I'm trying to, you know, help. Yeah. Out. So, get, so get, some get. of the, some of the ones that I get is, is obviously the price. That's the biggest thing. Right. But, I mean, yeah. but, but besides the price, it's, eh, I'm not ready right now. I still want to sell, but I'm, you know, like I have one today, like I'm, um, that I follow up with her every single Monday because she gets off, she's off work on Tuesdays and Sundays. And she goes, I, I'll, if anything, I'll be at the property on a Tuesday. It's an inherited property. And so I call her every single Monday and say, Hey, you're going to be over there tomorrow. I could come meet you out there. Oh, I still got to clean it. I, I don't care about all that stuff. Like I can get you an offer. No problem. I can look past all of that, you know? Um, and so every single Monday, like, you know, it's literally come down to, you know, I call her up. Hey, this is Randy. Oh, Hey Randy. How's it going? Like I'm before I even, I'm not even talking about the property. I'm talking about her, you know, yeah. how, how her week was, how her weekend was stuff like that, you know, but the biggest, I don't want to even call an objection, but it, it kind of is, is it's just the timeline. You know, um, yeah, they're procrastinating. I mean, yeah. If so, anything, yeah, because I'm like my my thing about objections now, honestly, is just that upfront process of of trying to figure out your level of motivation. Because yeah, um, at the end of the day, then too, it's really not an objection. It's more so just handling their 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 situation. Yes. Um, and so a lot of the situations that we end up you know closing on are are just things that take time, whether that's um, you know, probate, uh, divorce. Yeah. Um, I've had people where they're, um, they were letting their other spouse live in the property with their kids until their kids, you know, were out of school. And so we've yeah. waited for school years. Um, we've had situations, you know, where tenants are going to move out in two or three months, but they know they're not going to lease again. Uh, the property needs work. And so when they're done, it's vacant, they can sell it then. Um, uh, it's always, I would say the biggest thing, and I want, that's why I'm saying I don't want to even really call it an objection, but like the biggest uh, thing for us is just time. Um, yeah. Time and timing because um, things change all the time too. I uh, Today, I guess I had a guy that I just talked to two weeks ago that um, wanted me to, he's like, yeah, I want you to come over and take a look at the property. And I was just like, well, cool i said you know that's cool is because i you know the reason i'm contacting is because we just sold property or two um we're looking by the next one you know so i don't care i mean i can i always tell people this i can you know check with you in six months that's cool too um but we're looking for the next property we can close on the next you know say you know 30 60 90 days you know if we came over there and the price came to it i mean is that something you're ready to do i mean i i don't i you know I can always call you in six months and I always push it out. I always, yeah. I would say as far as like objections go, I think I now so more and push things out to reel people in. Um, Got it. And not in a way of like, you know, Oh, well, why haven't you listed with a realtor? Maybe you should just like, I don't do those obvious things anymore because then it's just like, well, then why the hell did you call me? But I always just like do that. Like, um, lost, lost puppy type thing or like yeah um you know giving you way too much benefit for the doubt type thing to where you correct me or you um tell me otherwise because i feel like a lot of people um they like to correct people but they don't like to to divulge too much information so i always say things where you know that i try to talk incorrect where they're like no 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 like i wouldn't sell in the next 30 60 days like oh really okay well 
you know, tell me about that. Like, you know, <laughs> you know like, what that right. and then they might tell you. So, um, I'm always just kind of playing, I don't know, I'm trying to play checkers, chess with people a little bit. Um, not too much, but I just, you know, I don't want to, I'm not here to chase you and, uh, you know, make you feel like your property is gold and, you know, that's why we're calling you. Like, we're calling you because we're calling the neighborhood. We're calling the neighborhood because we're looking for a property today. And if you're right. not ready to sell today, that's fine. Um, we're always looking for properties, but, you know, the reason we'd be coming over is because we're ready to buy. Exactly. So I just set the stage a lot of times, but I to set the expectations all the time. Yeah. And then just tell them, like, hey, oh, I always tell people to do, like, Oh, you know how many people I talked to today? I'm like, nobody wants to sell to me right now. Like, you know, like totally understand if you say no. Like, you just be the next person to tell me no. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know? Um uh I don't know. I just I guess that's come with com- being comfortable. Like first I was scared to have anybody tell me no because I was gonna lose a deal, but now I've just realized like, dude, the more I can get through those, the quicker the more I can get to the yeses and then the maybes or whatever and the time frames, like that's just when a good badass follow-up system comes in place yeah 100 percent. so that that's actually a good thing i'm actually going to be taking notes myself there <laughs> <laughs> so you know because i always bring that up hey well, well if you want that price you know that's more retail you know um you know i know a few realtors and i can you know that are very trustworthy and i can get you set up with a realtor you know yeah yeah. So, so yeah, that's the like. Okay, I don't know how much time we have left, but no, like to sum that up, the reason I became—I mean, not one—one one of the reasons I became a realtor is so that I can. I, I do like helping people out, no matter the situation. Like, if we can list your property and you're cool with that, you trust me, you like me, like let's list it. That's cool. Um, yep. I'm all about maximizing my deals, and so um, one thing I do for people is I walk through with them and they say, I want hundred. This is how I locked up the Hazel park deal. Um, he wanted 125,000 for it. Okay. Uh, and I was just like, you know, I think that's totally reasonable. I think if you listed the property, um, you got the tenants out there and we cleaned it up and we put a lockbox on it and people were able to walk through the property and homeowners have the opportunity to say, okay, cool. I can make this my own. I think you can get that all day long. He's like, really? I'm like, yeah, that's a great number. And he's like, yeah, okay. I said, so let me show you what that would look like. And I sent him to something called a seller net sheet, which title companies provide this. But yeah. if you put the property address in, um, they'll pull up the local taxes and it'll prorate everything. Yeah. Yada, yada, whatever. The point is, if you tell them a seller net sheet provided by a title company at 125 minus their um, prorated taxes, closing costs, mortgage, and everything, it'll show you what they're actually walking away with. And so this 125 that he wanted to list for, um, plus the closing costs, fees, and everything was more like I think what was it? Uh, um, well, here I here. Uh, I'm sorry, I bad quick math, but that's all right. Um, ended up being about 112. Locked the okay. deal up for less than that, um, and it was easier because now we weren't twenty five thousand dollars off. We're like maybe ten grand off, and I just asked him, you know, hey, totally understand where you're coming from. So if you want to get this, you know, just know we got to do A, B, and C. If you're cool with this, just know we don't have to do anything at all. Yeah. And then I just shut up and then I let them in their own head say, okay, yeah, eh, send the 10 grand more, but I got to put maybe a little bit of time and effort into it. And then I'm not sure if I'm actually going to get it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, cash sounds good. Or if they don't, and they're like, let's go for that. Okay, let's go for that. So then it's yeah. just easier to let people go in the direction that they want to go. Um, and I can just perform my best for them because I tell them too, and which is the other thing where we anchor back to us buying it creative or cash or whatever. Like, I am going to serve you at my best no matter what we do here. Mm-hmm. That being said, um, once we go into listing the property, my offers are off the table. I'm not yes. going to do that and then circle mm-hmm. back around to my offer and then you question me if I perform the best for you on listing the property or another broker sees that it's sold and, you know, uh, I end up buying it, and now my my credit or my my, my character is questionable. Yeah, um, legally, legally, you can't do that. You know? Yeah. Oh, see, okay, I didn't even know that. Well, good thing I'm good thing I'm a moral person. Now. Well, because because the thing is, <laughs> the thing is, is it's ethically. Yeah. Well, that's you know, what it is, and I mean, yeah. I'm just, I I don't 
I'm not going to put myself in that position, but then two, it just strengthen, strengthens your, your decision as far as, well, shoot, here he is right now making this offer. Yep. I want to see if we can list it, but if it doesn't go then, and then he's not around to buy it anymore, then, oh my gosh, I got to find another investor. Um, and not everybody does that, but the people that yeah. do, then it just solidifies how much more of a deal it actually is. Um, and everybody else, it pushes them in the direction they want to go. And I hold their hand and we go that way or we don't do business. That's fine. Um, wasn't meant to be. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's what I do. There was once a day that I would pray for you. I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too. Sneaking looks up and down from across the room. 